Nice to see the good old boys back on the track. NASCAR is back. Turning our attention now to baseball. You think about the Giants in this century. All the great pitchers who have come through. Jason Schmidt didn't win 20 games. Neither did Tim Lincecum, Matt Cain, Madison Baumgartner. None of those pitchers won 20 games in a single season. For that, you got to go back to 1993 when the Giants actually had two 20 game winners. And there's the third strike. Got him. Good pitch by John Burkett. John Burkett and Bill Swift were the Giants' last 20 game winners. Burkett went 22 and 7, Swift 21 and 8. That, however, was the extent of their commonality. One's, you know, more of a power pitcher with a, with a tremendous sinker, and the other guy is more of a precision guy, you know, like Brookie sort of dissects you. And, uh, Swifty kind of just carves you up. He's just got an unbelievable sinker. And, uh, you know, that's the talk around the league. That's what you hear people talk about is, is trying to, I mean, guys you just can see, they cannot hit the ball in the air. And uh, it's just amazing to watch. He has great control. Um, he has good stamina. He's going to be out there, about, you know, six, seven, eight, nine innings. Following the 1992 season, the Giants were sold and moving to Florida before then Commissioner Bud Selig blocked the move. Enter a new owner, a new manager, a new slugger, and really, a new era. And that's what most pitching coaches tell them. Oh, get, for a strike. Get yeah, there, get, get there. over the plate. Use your fielders. One of the next two pitches will get you a ground ball. My right. ball. <laughs> <laughs> the anchors of that pitching staff were Swift and Burkett. Each started 34 games, different in pitching styles and disposition. I've always been a pretty quiet guy. I don't t draw too much attention to myself. But John likes to talk a little bit, and. Uh, he likes to get things going, but, um, you know, that's the way he is. I like to have a good time, and, and uh, you know, Billy's maybe a little bit more serious. He's, he's funny, too. I mean, he's, he's messing around and doing, doing things all the time, too. Maybe he's a guy that doesn't get caught, and I'm the guy that gets caught now. Like I told Berkey, I said, man, I, you know, I bet when you were in school, you had to stay outside the door all the time for throwing spit wads or writing notes or doing something disruptive in class, even though it wasn't anything serious. Uh, like I said, he's like my Dennis the Menace. Uh, he, he could be right, yeah. Uh, he's a manager, so I gotta say he's right. The Giants spent 152 days in first place, but by the final weekend of the season, the lead was gone. The Giants desperately needed a win against the Dodgers in the next to last game of the season. Slap to second, Benjamin throws him out. And the Giants and the Braves will go to the final day of the regular season in a tie for first with 103 wins apiece. If we win one more game than the Braves, we'll be playing a playoff game. And if we win two more, we win. So plain and simple. If we, if we don't, we go home. Boy, you play 161 games and you get down to one game left and you're still tied. I mean, um, I don't think anybody could have written any better than this. Game 162, the Giants brought out their good luck charm and Willie Mays. But rookie Solomon Torres got the start against the Dodgers, and he gave up three runs. He was gone by the fourth inning. Relievers Dave Burra and Dave Ergetti allowed eight runs combined. Hit to right field, that is hit deep, and Martinez watches it go. Another home run for Mike Piazza. A brutal 12 to 1 shellacking by the Los Angeles Dodgers. And while the Braves celebrated, the Giants flew home. I wouldn't trade Dusty Baker and this team for anything in the world, and we're going to come back in 94. Thanks. 103 wins and not enough. Yet it's a season some refer to as the year baseball was saved in San Francisco. Others say it paved the way for the construction of Oracle Park. All I know is it was a magical season. We haven't seen a 20-game winner in San Francisco since 1993. And they add to it there as Burkett strikes out Sedano to win the game. So Burkett went 22 and 7, and Swift went 21 and 8 in 93. Since then, Sean Edzis. Uh, Estes went 19 and 5 in 1997. Madison Baumgartner 18 and 5 in 2016. And Tim Lincecum had the same record back in 2008 when he won the first of two Cy Young awards. 
I went down memory lane with Burkett, who has reinvented himself as an athlete. Joining us now from his home in Fort Worth, Texas, John Burkett, the last pitcher to win 20 games for the Giants, along with Bill Swift. Are you surprised you're the last 20 game winner? I'm very surprised. I mean, I, I've kind of lost touch with baseball a little bit and more focused on some other things, but uh, I would have sworn I would have bet a lot of money that uh, Lensicum and Kane had won uh, 20 games. But At what point did you realize 93 was going to be a special year because you guys had only won 72 games in 1992? Yeah, well, I remember watching the, I believe it was the uh, NCAA basketball tournament whenever it was announced that we acquired Barry Bonds. So that was definitely, you know, something that gave you goosebumps knowing that we were, we acquired the best player in baseball at the time. And uh, I felt like our team was maturing also at the time and we were ready to win. And uh, adding that piece, you know, was huge. Also Swifty and, you know, Mike Jackson and Dave Berba uh, really solidified our bullpen, which I thought was probably the best part of our team. At the time, our bullpen was pretty much unhittable, and uh, they were a big part of our success in 93. What was the feeling like on that final day of the season? Well, the final day was a, was a tough – I think it was a really difficult decision you know, for Dusty and Dick Pohl uh, to, to decide on Solomon Torres, who was a young kid at the time and, uh, you know, had a lot of tools. And, and you know, uh, and then we had Scott Sanderson, who was basically a five-inning pitcher at the time. He was at the tail end of his career. And I think it was between the two of those guys uh, who was going to pitch the last day. Swifty and I had pitched the previous days before that. So uh, they went with Solomon Torres, and, and uh, the Dodgers jumped on us early. And, you know, it was really not a game. I think we lost 12-4 to 4 or something like that. Piazza hit two home runs. And, but, you know, maybe it happens with, with Scott Sanderson also. You know, to me, it was a difficult decision. At the time, I would have picked Solomon Torres also. I had to, you know, go through my mind and honestly pick who I'd pick, and I would have definitely gone with him. You could make a case this was the most important season for the Giants in terms of their long-term future in San Francisco. Is that – have you ever thought about that and uh, what the 93 season did for San Francisco long-term? I never really thought of it that way, but, uh, you know, now that you mention it, uh, for sure, uh, 92, like you said, I mean, I had, I was looking for places to stay, you know, in Tampa, St. Pete, uh, after the 92 season, we thought it was a done deal that it was going to be, you know, we were going to be packing up and, and moving on to St. Pete. So, uh, you know, I remember, I still remember going through homes and, you know, places to stay and like, it was just a done deal. And then all of a sudden Peter McGowan steps in and, you know, changes the franchise forever. Uh, but definitely the 93 season, I think, brought a lot of excitement back into San Francisco and probably uh, kind of jump-started the opportunity to you know, get that new stadium uh, going downtown, and now it's you know, just an amazing place to play. Yeah, exactly. I think that did uh, was the impetus for uh, what became uh, Pac Bell Park. Uh, you play 10 more years, John, in the major leagues, and then you hang it up, and you get into uh, the PBA, the Pro Bowl, uh, Bowlers Association. I remember as a kid uh, watching Chris Shankle, Wide World of Sports, the Bowling League. Was, was that always a dream for you? It was. I grew up bowling and playing baseball. I, played, you know, I grew up in uh, Beaver, Pennsylvania, which is uh, about 40 miles from Pittsburgh. So the wintertime is cold and summertime is warm, and I would play baseball in the summer and bowling in the winter, and it just – I did it since I was eight years old and always wanted to be a professional bowler. Fortunately, baseball worked out first. And, you know, and then uh, five years ago, I turned 50 and decided to try the senior tour. So I've been doing that for the last five years. We take you back to May 28, 2019, the NorCal uh, Classic in Brentwood. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't think you ever uh, – rolled a 300 game in competition is that true and when you got down to that last role was there a pressure like pitching in a major league game i felt really good about it because i had thrown every pretty much every every shot you know in the, in the pocket so uh you just try to do the same thing over again and uh fortunately they all went down so that was a lot of fun to finally get that one off the board i read somewhere that only mookie Betts has rolled in competition a 300 game only two former major leaguers. Did you know about that? Is that true? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's correct. Yeah, I'm, I'm a total diehard bowler, so I was well aware. Wow. 
<laughs> but uh, I watched Mookie. I watched Mookie do it actually uh, on Flow Perfection. Bowling. 300 game for Mookie Betts. What did it mean to be the first may, uh, uh, pro bowler to uh, pitch in the major leagues and win a PBA event? Uh, it was exciting. I mean, that's something I've always wanted to do. So uh, to be able to accomplish that feat, it's really difficult. I mean, you know, you just think about the golf tour gets a lot of uh, – prestige and a lot of attention and uh, you never see anybody even being able to golf out on that tour so just to be able to get out there and compete with these guys and feel like that I can hold my own and to finally win a tournament uh, definitely is a huge accomplishment in my sports career. Now for our audience at home um, you have the most unique man cave in the history of a sport. Can you turn the camera up and show the audience yeah, exactly totally. what's in your house? So I'll tell you this, I'll set it up. So I obviously love bowling my whole life and I always dreamed of having my own lanes in my house. And so now that I've been on the senior tour, my wife and I decided to move, not because of that, but when we decided to move, I thought, you know what? I would like to, you know, have my dream come true and have a couple bowling lanes put in my house. So this is my lower level and this is where I'm practicing. And then, uh, this right here is the oiling machine. This, this puts the oil pattern on the lane right here. And plenty of bowling balls to go around. And then here's this, my pro shop. Here's my pro shop. This is where you can drill your bowling balls. So, uh, so John, can you take us to a commercial break, possibly rolling a bowling ball? Is that possible? And yeah, I can show do that. Us your, yeah. I'm barefoot, so I'm not going to be walking up to the lane roll. It won't look real athletic. That's uh, okay. John Burkett, number 33. About to roll the pin. Oh, he's got to spin. It looks good. <laughs> Pretty amazing. Burkett was scheduled to bowl professionally in Brentwood next month. That tournament has been canceled. He expects to be back on the lanes sometime in August.